बिस्मिल्लाम असल डर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम आरिफ एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू लेक्चर नंबर थर्टी सिक्स ऑन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ कंप्यूटर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड असम्बली लैंग्वेज प्रोग्रामिंग द टाइटल ऑफ टुडे सेशन इज अरिथमेटिक इंस्ट्रक्शन पार्ट टू वेल दिस इज अ कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ आर प्रीवियस सेशन इन विच वी स्टडीड एड एड विद कैरी सब्ट्रैक्ट सब्ट्रैक्ट विद बारो इंक्रीमेंट डिक्रीमेंट नगेट and the compare instructions well this slide shows uh, today's agenda after a very quick recap of x86 64 registers tool chain and x86 instruction set today we will discuss the unsigned and signed variants of the multiplication as well as uh, the division instructions along with the discussion and execution of their sample programs inside gnu debugger so a quick recap well dear students to understand and write x86 64 assembly programs one must know the naming convention that intel uh, uses for the 16 64 bit general purpose registers the meanings of different flags inside the r flag register the usage of the six segment registers eight floating point registers and 16 sse media registers this is very important so if you have an issue with this please go through the previous session in which i have discussed them in detail Uh, similarly this slide shows the x86 64 tool chain that we have discussed in many previous sessions and finally this slide shows different categories of x86 64 assembly instructions that we will inshallah cover in this part of the course and today we will finish the uh, integer arithmetic instructions with the leftover instructions like uh, uh, like the mul i mul div and i div and moreover we will talk about the uh, these uh, conversion instructions as well okay let us start with the multiplication instructions first well this slide shows you as to how on a paper pencil we can multiply two base 10 numbers the multiplicand the multiplier and the product they are shown and this is the same a uh, process using the base 2 or uh, the binary equivalent of the same numbers well the main point i want to highlight over here is that when we multiply to 8 bit unsigned numbers the result or uh, product may occupy 16 bits okay so this slide summarizes the behavior or operation of x86 mul instruction that can perform uh, 8 16 32 or 64 bit multiplication on unsigned integers well dear students a uh, mul is a single operand instruction as shown over here and this only operand is assumed to be the multiplier and this multiplier must be a register or a memory location an immediate operand is not allowed over here well the action of this instruction depends on on this operand and if this operand or multiplier is of 8 bits then the implicit multiplicand is in the al register and the implicit destination is the ax register the lower order 8 bits and the higher order 8 bits contains the product well if the operand or the multiplier is a 16 bit number then the implicit multiplicand is in the ax register and this dx ax contains the result the lower order 16 bits of result 
are in AX and higher order 16 bits of result are placed inside the DX register. Similarly, if the multiplier or the operand is of 32 bits, then the implicit multiplicand is in the EAX register and the implicit destination is in two registers EDX and EAX. Low order 32 bits of the result in EAX and high order 32 bits of result are in EDX register. And finally, if the operand or the multiplier is of 64 bits, then the implicit multiplicand is in RAX register and the implicit destination is again in two registers RDX and RAX. Low order 64 bits of result in RAX and high order 64 bits of result in RDX register. Dear students, uh, the carry and overflow flag are both set if the result extends into into the higher registers. Higher registers, I mean AH, DX, EDX, and RDX. Other than the carry and the overflow flag, the sign zero parity and auxiliary flags are undefined after an unsigned MUL instruction. My dear students, before moving ahead, please make sure that you have a clear understanding of what is written on this slide and what I have said about the multiplier, the multiplicand and the destination. Okay, to have a clear understanding, here is an example that multiplies uh, uh, two 8-bit numbers. The operand to MUL instruction is an 8-bit number contained inside a register BL. And this BL contains uh, 10 hex. So since it is a 8-bit, so the implicit multiplicand is inside AL. And we have placed an immediate value 4 hex in it. The implicit destination is the AX register containing the product of 4 and 10. Since the result has not extended to the higher order register that is AH, therefore the carry and the overflow flags both contain 0. And this is the same example. The only difference is that uh, the 8-bit multiplier is a memory operand. Well, you can assume that this uh, uh, defined byte instruction is there inside the inside the data section. Okay, so in this uh, example, since the operand to mul is bx, which is of 16-bit, so the implicit multiplicand is in ax. And the result, of course, goes in uh, DX AX. Uh, the lower 8 bits of the result are stored inside the AX register, as you can see over here, all zeros. And the higher 8 bits, or rather higher, uh, lower 16 bits are there inside the AX register. And the higher 16 bits are there inside the, inside the DX register. Can anybody tell me the status of the carry and overflow flag over here? Well, yes, uh, they will be set because uh, the result has extended inside the DX register. And once again, this is the same example, but this time the 16-bit uh, uh, multiplier is not in the register, rather is, is a memory operand. Okay, dear students, uh, if you have uh, understood, uh, please answer what will happen after uh, these uh, three instructions uh, will execute. I, I just wanted to know what will be the result. And since this is a 32-bit multiplication, 
so for the 32 bit multiplication the destination will be edx and eax the lower 32 bit of result inside the eax register and the higher 32 bits inside the edx register so once uh, uh, these two numbers are multiplied we get inside the eax as 8765 double zero double zero in hex and of course edx will contain uh, double zero double zero and uh, double zero one two and since the result has extended in the higher register so the carry flag and the overflow flag will also be set okay so that is it now is the time let's move on to the linux terminal and uh, see this small instruction in action to have a very clear understanding of what i have said on the slides let me show you the sample program that i have uh, written for this mul.nesm so this is the code so we have uh, three variables uh, var1, var2 and var3 and we have done 8 bit, 16 bit and uh, 32 bit uh, multiplication with the multiplier inside uh, uh, the register as well as inside uh, the memory location or a variable. Well these codes are available on my Bitbucket repository you can always download them. Let me assemble this program nesm g f elf 64 and the name of the file is mul.nesm let me link it mul.o make executable with the name of mul and let us load this inside the debugger in the text user interface mode so here we are let me set the focus uh, inside the command window before moving ahead let's put a break at the label start and uh, I want to see the registers as well so let me set the layout to reds and let me run the program great so here we have uh, all the registers, the source window contains the source of the assembly and uh, here is the command window. So let me run the first instruction. This will move uh, hex 4 inside the AL register. So here we have 4, the multiplicand, the multiplier will be moved inside the, the BL register. So 1 0 is over here. Once we execute the uh, mul instruction, the result will of course go inside uh, the AX register. And there you go, the AX contains 40. And since the result is not carried forward to the uh, higher order bits, so therefore we have uh, uh, the carry flag and overflow flag uh, set to 0. So this is what uh, uh, the 8 bit multiplication is with the multiplier inside the register. So let's do another example with the multiplier inside the variable. Let me move 4 inside AL and let me move the uh, byte variable. So what is the value of the byte variable? We also know that we can examine the byte variable with the command of x and it contains the force hex 10 so once this will be multiplied with 4 of course the result will be let me press si the result of 0040 will go inside the ax register as you can see and once again since the result or the product has not moved up to the higher order bit therefore the 
carry and the overshow flag are not set. So here is uh, the code snippet, three lines of code that uh, perform the 16-bit multiplication with the multiplier inside the register. Let me execute this instruction. 600 hex has gone inside AX. 100 hex has gone in BX. And now once we multiply it, here is the result. Kindly note the result. The lower order bits are four zeros which has gone inside the AX register while the higher order bit contains six. So that has gone inside the, the DX register. And similarly, we can perform the same task using, using a variable, 16 bit multiplication using a variable. Okay, let's move on to the 32 bit multiplication. We have moved uh, now the multiplicand 5454 hex in EAX register. So 5454 hex in EAX register and inside EBX we have moved 10,000 hex. And in EBX we have 10,000 hex. Now once we multiply it, you can observe again that the result is there inside EDX EAX register the lower 32 bits inside the EAX and the higher 32 bits inside EDX. Have uh, a note of uh, this RDX as well as this AX register. And there you go. So the EAX register contains the lower 32 bits and the higher 32 bits are zero. Since the result has not extended in the higher register, therefore the carry and the overflow flag are not set. So let's do a 32-bit multiplication with the multiplier inside the variable. So we have 545454 this time inside the EAX register and the other value is there inside the memory and that value, let me examine that examine in hex so since this is a double word so m percent var 3 oops it should not be yes so this is word so it contains 1 0 0 0 0 that is uh, 10,000 in hex so once 10,000 in hex will be multiplied by this, we will get this result which I have shown in comments over here. So let me press SI. So you know EAX contains the uh, lower order 32 bits and EDX contains the higher order 32 bits. Since the result has extended to the higher register, Therefore, you can set the carry as well as the overflow flag set. So I think uh, this is what we have discussed on the slides. And finally, uh, these three instructions are used to uh, gracefully exit the program. So let me press C to continue. And our program has uh, terminated successfully. Let's fall back to the slides. Okay. Uh, so dear students, after the unsigned multiplication, let us discuss the x86 i mul instruction, uh, which is a signed variant of uh, the mul instruction. Like the mul instruction, uh, this i mul instruction is also a single operand instruction, which can be a uh, uh, 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit or 64 bit register or memory address. Once again, depending on the operand size, uh, the implicit uh, multiplicand and uh, the destination they are shown in this table and they are the same as far as uh, we have seen the unsigned uh, variant of the IML instruction so these are the same registers the main difference is uh, IML treats is operands as signed twos complement and uh, of course to have a clear understanding there is an example that multiplies uh, uh, two 8-bit numbers. Uh, the number minus 4 in decimal is uh, multiplied with uh, 100. 
and the result is of course minus 400 in decimal or it's a two's complement representation in 16 bits fe70 this is the two's complement representation of minus 400 and of course this is stored inside ax register because this is a 8 bit multiplication also note that since the result has extended to the uh, higher order register that is the ah register so the carry and the overflow flag uh, are both set to 1 and here is an example of 16 bit multiplication that multiplies to 16 bit numbers minus 5 and 5 uh, the result of course is minus 25 in decimal or its uh, two's complement representation in uh, 32 bits and this will be saved inside the DXAX register. The AX register will contain the uh, lower 32 bits and the DX register will contain the upper 32 bits. And uh, since the result over here as well uh, has not actually extended in the higher register that is DX, therefore the carry and the overflow flag uh, are both set to uh, uh, zero. Uh, remember uh, this is just a sign extension the result has not gone over here 5 5 the 25 and 25 minus 25 is just uh, e7 and here is uh, another example of signed 32-bit multiplication uh, two 32-bit numbers are multiplied and of course the result will go in uh, 64 bits and the result is saved in the EDX EAX register, the lower 32 bits in EAX and uh, the upper 32 bits in EDX. Uh, my dear students, x86 IML instruction also has the 2 and 3 operands variant as well. Uh, for operands uh, only greater than uh, 16 bits. Well, this is the syntax of uh, the two operand IML instruction along with uh, an example code. Uh, the destination and the source operands are multiplied and the result is placed inside the destination operand, which must be a register. And of course, the previous value in the destination register is overwritten. So this is shown over here. And this is the three operand variant of uh, the same IML instruction destination source 1 source 2 and in case if you use this instruction this source 1 and source 2 operands are multiplied and the result is placed inside the destination register remember the destination operand must be a register while the source 1 operand can be a register or memory and the source 2 operand uh, must be an immediate value so this is the example I hope uh, it is making sense to you all. So let's once again move on to the Linux terminal and uh, see the IML instruction in action. Let's first uh, view the sample code that I have written IML.nesm. This time there are no variables. So the program is performing a 8-bit, 16-bit and 32-bit uh, uh, sign multiplication using the vanilla flavor of uh, IML. And uh, over here I am using the 2 as well as the 3-operand uh, variant of the IML uh, instruction. So let's load this program now inside the GDB in quiet mode dot for slash IML in the text user interface mode so here we are let me again put my focus to the command window put a break at the start symbol and let's see the registers as well we need them and let me run so here is the code. We are at the first instruction of our program. 
So the first instruction is moving AL inside, uh, uh, moving a decimal value minus 4 inside AL. So FC is uh, the loose complement representation of minus 4. We are moving 100 inside BL. So here it is. And finally, we are multiplying these two numbers and we will get minus 400. And there you go inside AX. Fe70. Fe70 is the two's complement representation of, uh, of course, minus 400. And since the uh, result has moved over inside the higher register, so you can see the carry as well as the overflow flag. Both are set. So let me move over here. Now I'm moving, I'm doing the 16 bit uh, multiplication now. But first I want to make the RAX register to zero. Moving minus 5 inside AX, moving plus 5 inside BX. So here we have, this is the 2's complement representation of minus 5, and this is plus 5, and once we multiply these, we will get the result inside DX AX. Remember dear students, this is 16-bit multiplication. So the lower order of the product is uh, going to be stored inside AX, and the higher order 16 bits will be stored inside the DX register. So here it is, you can see over here FFE7. Remember this E7 is actually minus 25 and this is the sign extension because this is a negative number so it has been sign extended. And similarly this is 32-bit multiplication. Once again I am uh, clearing the RAX register, moving the multiplicand inside the AX, EAX register. 4, 8, 2, 3, 4, 2, 4. So since this is decimal has been converted to hex. Minus 4, 2, 3 has been moved to EBX. Once again, this is the 2's complement representation of minus 4, 2, 3. Once we do again uh, this IML, these two numbers will be multiplied and uh, the expected 64-bit number will be stored inside EDX, EAX. This EAX will contain the lower 32 bits of the result and this EDX will contain the uh, higher 32 bits of the result. So you can observe it. The EX contains the lower order of 32 bits and this uh, EDX is just sign extended. So since this is just sign extended, the result has not uh, extended inside the higher register. So you can see the carry and the overflow flag are not set. And this is the two operand variant. We have moved uh, this value to R8 and we have moved this value to R9. So R8 contains uh, this decimal value and R9 contains this decimal value. These are the two's complement representation of both these numbers. Once we multiply them using the IML uh, two operand variant, this R9 and R8 will be multiplied and the result will be stored inside R9. So you can observe R9 now contains the result. And once again, since the result has not crossed over, <coughs> excuse me, therefore the carry flag and the overflow flag are not set. And these are the three operand variants. So this IML instruction will multiply the contents of R8 with this immediate value and place the result in R9. And finally, once again, uh, we press C to continue, exit the program, press Q, fall back to slides. Uh, okay, so dear students, uh, we are done with the multiplication instruction. Let us now start with the division instructions. This slide shows you as to how uh, uh, on a paper we divide uh, two base 10 numbers. Uh, the dividend 85 is divided by our divisor 2 and we get uh, 42 as the quotient and uh, 1 as remainder. And this slide summarizes the behavior or operation of x86 div instruction, div. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, this div instruction can perform a division with 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit or 64-bit divisor as its only operand. 
similar to mal instruction this operand must be a register or a memory location as shown in this column however uh, an immediate operand uh, is not allowed you cannot have immediate operand over here well dear students inside uh, the div instruction uh, the implicit uh, dividend is inside the uh, ax register or maybe the combination of these in case of a larger dividend the quotient goes inside AR register for the byte and AX, EX and RAX for uh, the bigger divisions and these are the registers where the remainder goes. And this is shown over here as well. If the divisor of the operand is of 8 bit, the quotient goes inside the AL and the remainder goes in the AX register. And if the only operand or the divisor is of 16 bit the dividend will of course be taken from the dx ax register the 32 bit dividend can be there the quotient will be in the ax and the remainder will be in the dx register and if we have a 32 bit divisor or a 32 bit source naturally the 64 bit dividend will be there inside edx eax register the quotient will go inside EAX and the remainder will go inside EDX and for the 64 bit divisors the 128 bit dividend will be inside RDX RAX register the combination of these two the quotient will go inside RAX and the remainder will go inside the RDX register uh, as far as the status flags are concerned uh, the status flags are undefined for 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 the division instruction well, dear students, uh, uh, before moving ahead, uh, uh, please have a very clear understanding of uh, uh, what are the uh, possible uh, registers where the dividends will go, uh, where the quotients will go, and where the remainder will go, depending all depending upon uh, the size of the divisor. Okay, so to have a better understanding, here is an example that divides uh, 85 decimal with the uh, 2. Uh, note the quotient will go inside the uh, AL and the remainder inside the AH register as shown over here. Since this is a 16-bit uh, uh, by 8-bit division, so the quotient will go in AL and the remainder will go in AH. And uh, this example divides a 32-bit number with a 16-bit number. Note the 16-bit uh, divisor is there inside the CX register and the 32-bit uh, dividend is there inside the DXAX register as shown over here. Uh, the lower order uh, 16 bits are there inside AX and the higher order bits are there in DX. And since we do not have the higher order bits, so we have placed a zero inside DX. Uh, the quotient in this case will go in AX and the uh, remainder inside the DX register. And similarly, this is uh, an example that divides a 64-bit number with the 32-bit number. Note that 32-bit uh, uh, divisor is there in ECX register and the 64-bit dividend in uh, EDX, EAX, the lower 32 bits in EAX and the higher 32 bits in EDX. And of course, the uh, quotient goes in EEX and the remainder goes in uh, EDX register. Okay. And this is an example of uh, 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 divide overflow. Uh, my dear students, uh, a divide overflow occurs when you divide a, a very large number, a very large dividend with uh, a very small uh, uh, divisor. After the uh, this div instruction executes, the uh, quotient is uh, sixty thousand hex, and this of course cannot fit inside the AX register, and so this will cause an overflow. Once you execute this program and this div instruction gets executed, you will get a runtime floating point exception. 
Okay, so let's again move on to the Linux terminal and see the div instruction in action. Let me show you the code. Less div dot nesm. Uh, well, dear students, uh, uh, this program is also performing an unsigned division with the uh, with 8-bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit divisor. And uh, here is the code for uh, the divide overflow. These are the same code that I have uh, discussed on the slides. Uh, please uh, do load this uh, program inside GDB and uh, uh, see how different instruction executes and uh, the quotient and the remainders and of course the uh, flags will remain unaffected for the div instruction. So uh, uh, this program is also there on my Bitbucket repository. Do execute this program and let me move on to the final part of uh, today's session that is uh, the signed division. Well, dear students, uh, like the unsigned div instruction, this idiv instruction is also a single operand instruction, which can be, of course, uh, 8, 16, 32, or 64 bit. And this can be a register or a memory location. Well, in this example, you can see that the dividend 7 is divided by a divisor, which is negative, minus 2. The quotient, of course, is minus 3, and the remainder is 1. And of course, these are the registers where uh, the quotient and the remainder will go. And these are the registers where you need to place the dividend. Here is a sample assembly code that performs this task. Uh, well, there is one very important point and uh, rather a critical point that you should uh, keep in mind before you execute this idiv instruction is that the dividend must be sign extended. Uh, so, uh, over here I have sign extended the dividend because this is a positive number, this doesn't make much difference, but in case of a negative number, it, it will make a difference. So, since uh, this dividend is of 16 bit inside the AX register, the higher order bits are sign extended. Well, in case of a 32 bit dividend, uh, over here. Remember, this will be more tricky. If the AX contains a positive number and uh, the DX must contain all zeros, the sign bit, and if AX contains a negative number, uh, the DX must be sign extended. Well, to amicably handle this issue, x86 provide uh, three uh, sign extension instructions. CBW, CWD and CDQ. Well, this CBW is convert byte to word instruction and this extends the sign bit of the AL register into the AH register. <clears throat> Let's suppose that AL contains minus 8. So, minus 8 means in hex it is D0. We need to place all Fs inside AH because we want to sign extend this number inside AH as well. So convert byte to word this instruction will a zero operand instruction this instruction will extend the sign bit of AL inside the AH register. Similarly we have the CWD which will convert a, a word to double and this will extend the sign bit of this AX register into the DX register. Suppose once again we have placed a minus 8 inside AX and we also want that the DX register should also be sign extended with what is there inside the AX register. So we have used this CWD instruction. So after this CWD instruction, this AX register having the sign bit of 1 will be extended inside the DX register. And finally, this uh, CDQ convert double word to quad word instruction. This extends the sign bit of uh, 
EAX into the EDX register. Suppose once again we have a minus 8 inside the EAX register having this hex value and this CDQ instruction once executed will extend the sign bit of EAX register inside the entire EDX register. So once again uh, these three instructions are very useful once we are using with the IDIV instruction if the dividend as uh, uh, the dividend needs to be sign extended uh, so we need these three instructions let's see this happening so here is a 16 bit uh, with 8 bit to be an example and uh, we have a minus 48 remember this uh, dividend is negative this time so we have placed a minus 48 inside the al register and we do need to uh, extend the sign bit inside the AH as well. So we have used the CBW instruction. So this extends the sign bit of AL into AH. And after that we do the division. And of course uh, the division is uh, the same as we have done inside the simple div instruction. And this AL will of course contains the uh, quotient and the AH will contain the remainder. And this is an example for uh, dividing, dividing a 32-bit number with a 16-bit number and uh, we have placed a minus 48 inside the AX register the dividend and now we need to sign extend it to DX so we have used CWD convert word to double and after execution of this instruction the sign bit of uh, AX register that is this register will be placed inside the DX as well. And this is again the example for a 64-bit by 32-bit division. Once again, we have placed a negative number that is the dividend inside the EAX register. The dividend is there inside the EAX register only and we need to sign extend it to EDX as well. So we have used the CDQ instruction. This will extend the sign bit of EAX into EDX and the rest is simple. Okay, so once again, let's move on to the Linux terminal and uh, see a sample program to develop a clear understanding of these instructions. And let me do this this time myself. Uh, the code is there inside the idiv.nason file. So this is the code, uh, the same code that I have described on, on, on the slides as well. Let me straight away go into the GDP. Uh, load this program inside GDP in quite mode. Dot form slash idiv uh, in text user interface mode. I have already assembled and linked this program. So here we are. Let me put a focus on inside the command window. And let me put a break at the start symbol. Let me see the registers. And let me run. <clears throat> okay, so here we are. So this is the first instruction. Uh, let me execute it by pressing SI, moving a negative 48 inside the AL register. Okay, now this is you see, I, I just need to sign extend this 8-bit value to a 16-bit value. So I have used the CBW instruction. Keep a note at, at this place. You see, this is sign extended now. And rest, we have moved the 5 inside the BX register. Now I am dividing this with this. And of course, after this, the quotient will go inside the AL that is this F7 which is minus 9 and the remainder will go in AH that is FD which is minus 3. So this was a, a 16 bit divide, uh, uh, divided by a 8 bit signed number and over here we have example of a 32 bit uh, division with a 16 bit number. So let me place a 0 inside RX first. Let me move a minus 48 inside AX. So 
now these are the 16 bits ax register and i need to uh, extend this sign bit now inside the dx register so i've used cwd keep a note of this register it will be sign extended and here you have and now uh, the divisor inside bx it is already 5 so after this i give instruction the ax will contain the quotient minus 9 and this dx will contain uh, the remainder that is minus 3 remember these are the tools complement representation of uh, uh, minus 9 and minus 3 and similarly this is a 64 bit number by 32 bit number division uh, setting the RAX to 0, moving uh, minus 48 inside EAX this time, you see, 32 bit register. And once again, I need to sign extend it to EDX now. I need to sign extend it. So I have used the CDQ instruction. After this instruction execute, this EDX register will contain the sign bit of the EAX register. There you go. And then we have the divisor and then we have divided it and now you see after this division the 32 bit uh, quotient is inside the EAX register and the 32 bit remainder is inside the EDX register that is minus 3. Uh, remember dear students I have just used the smaller values minus 48 and 5 you can always take bigger values. I have taken smaller values for pattern understanding. And finally, these are the three lines of code that we place at the end of every program to exit the program gracefully. Let me continue and let me quit. Okay. So, falling, falling back onto the slides and, uh, and that is it. Okay, so uh, this is all for today's session, my dear friends. I hope it was informative for you all. If you have liked it, please subscribe my YouTube channel and share it with your friends. I wish you all the best, happy learning and Allah Hafiz.